Hello. Yay, that's a round of applause for you guys for coming out on a, on a weekend, on a Sunday. So I'm actually going to start off, I have so much that I want to share with you guys that I want to talk about. And I think it's, um, you'll see why it's to my point to bring this up first. Um, if you wouldn't mind taking a minute to remember, uh, to the point of the video, uh, an angel, the voice of an angel that, uh, that we lost yesterday, Miss Whitney Houston. Um, and I bring her up because I firmly believe that had Whitney Houston had truly the self-love and the self-esteem that was necessary to stand up to her husband, her bully, she would still be with us today. So it's really about uh, developing that, that self-esteem and that's why I wanted to to bring that up and also just to have remember uh, the wonderful angel and, and thankfully we will always have her voice uh, to be with us for the rest of our lives. Um, I um, speaking to that point about developing self-esteem that's part of what um, I do today. Uh, one of the things that I do seasonally is because of my having been given uh, the blessing of being a Miss Venezuela I am now and have been for the past uh, seven years, the official stage presence and runway modeling coach for the Miss USA California pageant. And what I've done is I kind of subliminally uh, develop these girls' self-esteem. And I make them feel great about, I kind of go backwards with it, um, but I make them feel great about the reflection they see in the mirror of themselves because I notice that when I get my girls to really uh, value and love the image that is staring back at them in the mirror, they start feeling good from inside, where as Pete pointed out, that's where our true beauty comes from. And back to that, I wanna kind of compliment Miss Annette over here, coming from uh, an expert in beauty. Girl, you look fabulous, honey from all the thing of her saying that she faded away and, and was always the one that faded You are a gorgeous, amazing woman. And, and if my, my little bit of, of expertise, it's coming from an expert beauty eye in beauty. And I wanna give those words to you um, from the bottom of my heart, from an expert in beauty, as a matter of fact. I'm sad that you guys can't see this. I'm so blessed. Um, I got Fox, I just got given uh, my own television program on national TV, on Fox, on a new Latin network. Thank you. No need to clap. I just wanted to share that because it is uh, highlighting and, and allowing me to use this expertise that I have in beauty, which I use to try and empower uh, women, girls, and women like myself that are mommies, but we still want to look good because looking good does make us feel good about ourselves. So now I'm here. Let me share my story. I was bullied. I was pretty much, I think, what you see standing before you. I've always, always been tall, taller in, in, in those days when I was uh, in elementary school, which is where my bullying started. I was 11 years old, and I was called tree by one of the girls, and she was she leaded this this uh, name calling. Um, I could tell. Even though my mother, I have a very uh, strong woman as a mother, and she did fill me with self-esteem. But honey, I could tell that they weren't giving me a compliment. They weren't calling me tree as a compliment. So I would go home. I wasn't taking it nearly as bad because thankfully in my home, I did have parents that were filling me with self-love and self-worth. But still, like I said, hey, we're kids, I'm human. I was like, no, oh, that doesn't sound like a compliment to me. So I went home sad about it, upset about it, crying. Mommy, mommy, they're calling me tree, on the tree. And bless her heart, again, my mother, just so amazing. Her response was, oh, honey, you should just smile and say thank you. Because trees, you should explain to them. Bless her heart, though. And this, I encourage parents, 
To react this way, she was said to me, trees explain educate these kids that trees are the oxygen. They provide the oxygen that we breathe. And so it sounds really beautiful to us adults. I remember looking at my mom like, uh, not so much. <laughs> Thanks, Mom, but I'm still a tree. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, of course, did I go and explain this to these kids? Uh, there's kids down here. I'm going to say H to the no. <laughs> you all know what that means. I still, you know, was bearing that, that um, the consequence, not the consequence, just, the, you know, feeling heard that every day I had to deal with that. Now, one thing that was very important to me, and I encourage this in parents and in, in you children, is I found my refuge and a lot of strength in kind of an outer world that I had at the time I was a, a ballerina. And guess what? Looking like a tree, being tall and thin, which is what they were making fun of, uh, was ex exactly what I needed to, to uh, stand out and to do well in ballet. So I was able to not let it get to me as much, but I understand that most of us kids don't necessarily have somewhere else where we can take that refuge. Um, but now, what I did do is, I didn't let it get me down. I, I kept going with, with, my, with myself, with how I was. I still stood tall. I still then focused, and that's what I did is I, I, the other refuge I did was to do well in school. And so I focused on my books, and I excelled in that, and kept going with my life. And so what happened is I just, you know, my description starting out, what happened, this tree, stands before you today, this tree turned into a Miss Venezuela. This tree turned into, thank you very much, turned into, for our city, mainly more, more important for me, for my family, uh, symbolically a survivor. I'm the only castaway from the city of San Antonio to ever have been cast on the CBS reality show Survivor. So this tree, just like all you children and any one of us in this room who has been bullied, is a survivor. Any of us are true. So I'm here. I got that title to be on that reality show, which I now, I'm here because I share that with you. I'm just symbolically representing all of you here who have ever been bullied to say, you know, I wonder where these bullies are now, but look at where I am now. Okay, and by the way, God is so good to me, I'm not going to lie, so you know, I'm all, I'm nice, but I'm human. I ran into my bully, and I couldn't have planned it better, that's why I love me some God. Hey, can I get an amen? Amen. Okay, I love me some God, because I could not have planned it better myself, we could not believe it. My mom and I, I was about 31 years old, over 10 years ago, and I was at my hometown, went to eat some yummy Mexican food with my mommy, and my little boy was about a year old. We walk into this restaurant, so you guys can see how, what energy is. So crazy how powerful energy is. We walk in, we get in line. I am not lying to y'all. I instantly, from her back, I could feel that that was my bully. And I turned to my mom and I said, Mom, that's Kim Balchus. What? That is Kim Balchus. She turned around. And it was her. And not to be mean, she was looking all but a mess. <laughs> she was looking all but a mess. And the tree wasn't looking so bad. So again, so you guys can see I'm human. You know. Uh, God gave me the opportunity. She was right there. <laughs> and so she turned around, and it did feel good. It did feel good. More than 20 years later, it did feel, exactly actually 20 years later, it did feel good when she turned around, and she says, she looks me up and down, she's like, Rita Barrios? And I said, yeah, the tree, remember? <laughs> 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 um, well, and then, you know, I just melted. I did milk it. She said, oh, wow, what have you, what are you doing? What have you been up to? 
And again, it's because I believed in myself that then I had this list of things to tell. And I said, well, where do I begin? Should I start with I was Miss Venezuela? Or should I start with that I was just in a movie with Steven Seagal in Hollywood? Or, oh yeah, that I'm married, happily married, and, and have a beautiful baby. How about you? <laughs> and she had nothing. As Jeff Probst says to us when we, when we get sent back to camp, I got nothing for you. Go back to camp. She had nothing for me. Um, so the bully had turned into nothing. And that's what, if any of you kids are receiving, are the receiving end of bullies, there are two sides to it. Her bullying was probably coming from somewhere. She was probably suffering something that was making her go out and bully, and it was her way of getting attention. And it was, it's a silent, a different kind of, what we call silent screams. It's just a way of getting attention. So my advice on that end is to, you know, yes, you're, you're the receiving end and that hurts, but it's to investigate on both sides because it's happening for a reason. There's a lot of children that the bullies themselves are going through deeper, deeper pain than the children that are getting bullied because the, you know, the children that are getting bullied at oftentimes, it's, it's coming from nowhere. These people are like this girl making, really making up, calling me tree, like really, whatever, what, where did that come from, you know? So we really do have to pay attention as friends in school. Um, I know that there's schools that have programs. My children's, uh, my daughter's elementary school has a program, I believe it's called PAL, um, where it's organized by the children themselves. Uh, by the children themselves to help within uh, each other, to keep an eye out on it. Of course, as parents, as teachers, I wore this shirt on purpose. Just do it. Do get involved. Do step in, because the consequence, it's too sad. It's not worth it to not intervene. I'd rather get my hands slapped for intervening and, and and avoiding something terrible from happening than not to have intervened at all. So do what my t-shirt says. It's not, it's not a Nike ad today. It's just do it, intervene, make sure you help. And then I do want to end uh, sharing some advice that I read many, many years ago, thankfully when my children were, were babies. How, and parents, be honest, we've all made that mistake. How many of us highlight, and it's to um, Annette's point about words being so powerful, words uh, being, you know, the, the, the life or death. Well, I read somewhere, it was an article that somebody wrote about how all his life, when he was a little boy, just like Annette, he kept being told that he was nothing, that he was not doing, he, he could never do anything right, he was never going to amount to anything. He was always going to do everything he did. He always did wrong. The parents' reaction was always, see, you're always getting in trouble. You're just a troublemaker. That's all you are. Never doing anything right. Just a troublemaker. So he said, so what would I do? I would go out and do what my parents said that I was. They told me I was a troublemaker. So I would go out and make trouble. See, you're never going to amount to anything. Never doing your homework, you're never going to amount to anything, you're never going to graduate. So what did I do? I never amounted to anything, I didn't graduate. But then, somewhere, somehow, I'm kind of giving you the short version of somebody did intervene and turned his life around, and it's looking back that he realized how powerful he was being told. And he comes back and says, you know, if they had, instead of focusing and dwelling, and this is my advice to you, it's, and it's wonderful. Instead of us dwelling when our children do something wrong, instead of focusing on the negative thing that at that moment they might have done wrong, turn it around. Don't make such a big deal out of it. Make the smallest deal you can about the negative things and actually make huge deals, bigger deals, because the truth is we don't highlight 
the great things that they do. And for example, with my kids, what I did after reading that article, what I started doing years ago, when I noticed that the house was totally, when I had complete peace and quiet, as I'm getting my work done, and I'm hearing there's no, you know, yelling, no bickering, total peace and quiet. I would, I am not gonna lie, my, my, my kids, because we were in our house, not embarrassed about it, but I would do this. I would make the biggest deal. I would run in the rooms, just, yay, oh my God, clapping and applauding and applauding them. Mom, what, thank you guys so much. You are behaving so incredible. You're making mommy so happy right now for giving mommy this peace of mind, this peaceful moment. You guys are the best kids that mommy could have ever imagined. Thank you guys. You are so well behaved. I'm so proud of you. Again, it sounds like I'm exaggerating, but you know, applauding that, telling them the positive thing might sound silly, it might sound like you're being over the top. You're not. That's what they start then believing that they are. Good kids. They behave well. You're so smart, so considerate, I would tell them. Thank you for being so considerate to give mommy this peace of mind so that mommy can get her work done. So thoughtful. And now, what kind of children do I have? They're sitting here in this room tonight. I have considerate, thoughtful, kind human beings because I focused on always telling them all the positive things. And anytime they did something negative, I would turn it around. You, know, you, you didn't get that done, but that's okay because I know that you can get it done. I know that you're going to get that homework done. Or I know you didn't mean to do that because I know that you're considerate. I know you're a good boy. I know that you're a good girl. Turn around even the negative and bring out the positive. Because that is the result. You are going, you are telling, as Annette was saying, that her parents would put into her mind that she was going to fade away. No. That's what she, the point that she's trying to make, how powerful the words are. And I very proudly say, and, and it, it might sound a little bit arrogant, but I'd rather err on the side of, of filling our children with these kinds of powerful self-esteem. I know that the, the line is, is very thin between being self-confident and arrogant, but do you know what? In this day and age, I'd rather err for my children to be on the side of being overly self-confident because that is going to be the shield that they need to, to turn into survivors. And I know that I'm in a room full. You guys are all here because you guys are already all survivors. And I'm very honored. Thank you so much, Ellie. Thank you, Pete. Thank you all for your undivided attention and your applause. And uh, most of all, thank you for not voting me off today. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm going back to camp. I don't know who our next person is. God bless.